Coming up in today's video, we go looking for a specific chicken killer fox. Plus, we take a look back at some of 2020's best foxing action. Oh, and I've got a sore throat in case you hadn't noticed. This, of course, is... So we start tonight's episode with an all too familiar story, an empty chicken pen and lots of evidence of the massacre that happened here the night before. If possible I like to visit places during the day to get the lay of the land and survey potential spots that I can call the fox into and the decent backstops. And this as you'll see in a second is going to be quite a tricky area. Now, luckily for me I have permission to the land on the right of the property and they have their own shoot. It's not a field they actually shoot, but nevertheless it's owned by the same farmer. Now, there's clearly too much stuff in the way up near the chicken pen, which is just over here. There is a potential uh, fox haven in that brambled section over to the left. The best shooting position really is this section here, big section on the right hand side between the factory and the trees. Now if possible I want to get the caller in this field, somewhere towards the bottom of the field. The wind's pushing into my face at the moment, and foxes will always try and come upwind if possible of something that they're coming into. So, later that evening, Rick goes and puts the caller out, and we get in position, put the caller on and wait. Straight away we knew it was going to be fairly tricky. The moon was quite bright so we used the big side of the caravan to help silhouette our position. Using the Nate Vision rifle clamp I'm able to hold the rifle steady on my Primos trigger sticks giving me both hands free to operate the caller and thermal at the same time. I initially started with my go-to calls, which was the pheasant distress call, and I then moved to the rabbit call. Nothing showed. Around 23 minutes in, I switched over to the fox mating call, and something caught my attention. On the ploughed field, to the right of the property. It's game on. It was a few minutes and this fox very cautiously sat there, observed and was very reluctant to come much closer. It currently sits at around just over 180 yards which is doable off sticks but ideally I want to get it under 160. However our cautious Charlie reads the rule book and comes up on the wind bringing it closer to me. However, I've now got to contend with the grass that's in the way, as well as the fog that's quickly settling in. say almost a textbook not easy there's a mist you see towards the factory there there's a mist that's come down but luckily it came in the safe direction with all that ploughing behind it across the hole there so it, well, it knew something was up it didn't want to quite commit Somewhere. 
can't see it. Got grass sticks it. A bit further than I thought, actually. There it is. Completely bowled it over. Vixen. Let's have a look at you. Looks a bit skinny though, doesn't it? Mm. Don't look like it's full of chickens. Mm. I have reservations whether this is our chicken killer just because she's so skinny. So either um, she's got some help or um, she's just stashed the birds away. Time will tell. Um, what we're going to do, I'm going to revisit and come and see the owner tomorrow. Um, I'm going to open her up and see if she's got any chickens inside her. Um, but what I'm also going to do is put the trail cam uh, in at some or trail cams in at some specific points just to see if any other foxes are visiting and if they are then we'll deal with those as well. I spotted her coming in with the thermal um, and strangely enough actually to the vixen in heat call as you can probably tell um, from the footage that I managed to get um, she was a little reluctant but luckily she came up the dike side um, with that nice ploughed field uh, behind her um, so a nice safe backstop and we're able to take her out. Uh, the other introduction I've got um, for this was the limited edition Team Foxer clamp that sits on top of the Primos trigger sticks. Um, that leaves me hands free to be able to um, scan around with both hands. It just makes holding the thermal that bit easier. Myself and Rick are going to head off now uh, around the pheasant shoot just to see if we can account for one or two more while we're out. I mean, hey, it'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? <coughs> Well, we actually ended up getting fogged off that night. We simply couldn't see anything. We did see foxes, though, um, using the thermal, but we just couldn't get a bead on them using the NV. So a couple of nights later, we went back to the locations that we'd seen the foxes um, in, and this is the first result. Um, although there's no fog this evening, it is windy, so uh, we've got something else now to contend with. Huh. You can never have it easy, can you? So with the first fox laying down permanently with a 20 mile an hour wind, the wind picks up to almost 30 mile an hour here. So I've got a very stiff right to left breeze here. This fox comes in a treat though, but you can see just how windy it is here with the, the tail starts hanging out to the left hand side of the fox. So when I take the shot here, I actually give it some right hand edge just to make sure that the bullet drifts uh, into the desired location. And bang, that one goes down with an almost perfectly placed bib shot. Got a separate night out now. Um, again, myself and Rick are out around the pheasant shoot. Um, it's actually not overly windy here. I think it's just amplified somehow by the uh, microphone on the thermal. Um, as my thermal has a little wobble, I have to press the uh, refresh key twice there just to get it back on normal. But you can see this fox here that we'd witnessed walk out of the pheasant cover itself. As it gets to the edge of the field, I try and stalk it a little bit closer, but every time I get closer, it goes further back. I eventually get within range of the fox, and I've got these roe deer to contend with. Um, as I walked a little closer, the roe deer got bumped and scared off. Uh, however, the fox sort of sat there in bewilderment, so I got the first shot off and fluffed it. What a stalk, what a stalk that was. Saw him with a thermal, a long way off. Look at this, this field is tacky as anything. But bumped the road here up. 
straight shot across the field. Foxes stood there, a bit bewildered. Not too sure if I clipped him with the first shot or not. But without question, he went down with that second shot. And he wasn't far away then either. And here it is. I'm guessing another vixen. Just because it looked quite small. So it sticks out. Rick's still coming up the track that all the way over there. There she is. There's a fox, it is a little fixer. Good effort. Well, that was some but not all of the recent foxing activity. Now we'll have a little look back at some of the best action I've managed to capture on film from the 2020 foxing season. Hope you enjoy these clips guys, take care, stay safe and as always, happy shooting. And ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the best death scene award for 2020. Charlie Fox. What a flop. Thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe. And as always, happy shooting.